Hi, this video is going to show how to remove and reattach the bumper on Peugeot 207 CC in particular, but they're all the same. And um, I mean, the reason for me to remove the bumper was because it was cracked. My daughter uh, unfortunately hit the bollard. Um, Sometimes you might need to remove the bumper. Uh, well, if you need to replace headlight, you need to remove the bumper. If you need to do any work on a, a aircon heater or aircon radiator, you need to remove the bumper. Uh, and sometimes it's much easier to replace the radiator if you remove the bumper. So bumper removal is fairly essential part on maintenance on or work on these cars. So please stay tuned and have a look how I done it. Thank you. Hi, welcome back. It's a nice crisp December morning, just above freezing. Um, I got my daughter's car, it's around, little Persia 207cc. Uh, and guess what? The bollards, they like to bump out in front of the car. Just suddenly, you know, you like sort of park nicely and everything, and then when you want to go, bollard just bumps out and completely wrecks out this plastic bumper. So it's all broken. So got another one replacement, um, second hand of the breakers so you're gonna attempt replacing the bumper I know they got a few screws on the top the couple bolts on underneath and the two bolts on each side underneath side light and you need to get your hand behind this liner and to remove the liner there are some panel clips one on the bottom there there's some inside within the wheel arch so to access all that nicely I would need to really jack the car up so I got more so I get more clearance between the wheel arch and the wheel so I can get my hands in and remove them clips so I can pull the inner liner wheel arch liner down so I can access these two bolts on the side also will give me a bit more clearance on the bottom for the, for the lower ones, lower bolts, same story on this side. So, first thing first, open the bonnet, and yes, another thing as well. Let me just get, oh, I need two hands, yeah, it's all right. These are the fixings, you've got one there, one missing from there, one there, and one there. That's the top, top of the bumper. Now, the other thing is I'll need to take the number plate off so I can put it on this one, on the new bumper. Um, now, this, these number plates, they got these safety screws. They're designed so you can get them on like a little coupler um, I can see a bit better but you can't really unscrew it so I'm gonna make a slot in them so you can use slotted screwdriver with a disc cutter Now, as you can see, that becomes a slotted screw. Just need a screwdriver. Right, screwdriver here. And you can unscrew this easily now. You can see that. I'll use new, new screws with new little cups to fix that on. I've got one more on this side.
Easy. Ta-da! First thing done. Now, I'm going to jack the car up. Two jacks. And some axle stands. I'll always put axle stands on. Because I never trust the jacks. One on each side. And we can lift the front up. Because as you, if you if you just look at this, the front, <coughs> it's got about it's only about three inches off the ground. That's not enough for me to go under there. You got these engine frame mounts, Our position stands below that. So if it does go, it will sort of rest on one of the strongest parts on the underside. Right, let's have a look. You see that section there is completely broken off okay that's just bending down this is all folded down this tray yeah this is snapped off here okay right let's start with Start with these clips. There is one clip there. If you're looking at the at the strut, this is front left wheel. Strut is there, just offside. Let me try to put torch on. Right, that's better now. It is there. One clip and. There's one clip down here and there's one clip underneath here. So if we get them off, we can get that liner this way, away from the wheel arch. And we can access uh, two bolts that are behind this joint here. So literally just need to pull this down on both sides. So also to do that I'm gonna turn the steering, uh, steering wheel so the wheel goes over, give me a bit more access. Ah, it's funky. Ah, let's try this one. Yeah, that's right. Do -do -do -do. Full lock one way. Ignition off. Right, you can see there. Screwdriver. You can use a panel clip removal tool or just with a screwdriver, just pull the center point out a bit and then whole thing should just pop out like that. So that's one, and uh, we got two more underneath. Or maybe one, if the other one broke. That's there. That's another one. as well it's another one yeah.
Ah, there's one little screw, forgot about that one. It's just, uh, I can kind of see it on the dirt, it's there. And that's a little Torx. Right, there's a little T20. T20 Torx. Closing the screw. One. And that line up can be pulled down. I need to bend it a little bit, I need two hands for that. There we go, with two hands, pull that plastic liner down, and you have full access now to all of this. These two screws are there, the rusty one on the bottom. And the one that's missing on the top, so someone had this off before. So da -da -da. it's only one screw to do there. It's just behind this section here. And let's do the other side. Put these fixings in a safe place. There, so we don't lose them. Another one. Another one. As we already know, the little screw on this side has already broken off. So should be able just to pull this liner comes off. And you can have access to these two screws. See the rusty screws, bolts? There they are behind that, them two sections. I think the size 10. And underneath, there should be two of them. That one there, I don't know what is holding on, and that one there, because that's all broken off. So, I'm try to undo them. I don't do them or cut them off. One hand. Yes. As you can see, the plastic has broke off. Right, the clip behind it is turning. I need to jam something on it. It's this clip. That clip on the other side is turning, so we'll have to jam it. And there you go. Eventually, came off. It's broken. It was broken anyway. We're replacing that part. So just put all them aside. Ah, I just realised I lost the previous clip where I was filming taking that first bolt. So we're now on the second bolt. We're using one of these ratchet spanners because it's so tight you know you can't put socket set or anything um, luckily it's not many bolts to do it's just all put annoyingly this is what you have to do if you want to replace headlight as well because to access to all headlight fixings you need to remove bumper it's very hard to see Try to show you that. I'm seeing it from this angle. 
that's how far you can get your head in and that is pretty much this angle and that's all in the dark an angle you can see now it's actually from inside the wheel arch because I got camera in doing most of it by feel I hope I position the camera right because I can't even see the screen just doing one notch at a time That's probably why the other screw on the other side has never been put back in. It's getting better now. It's not a very long screw. Just awkward. There it is. I put some oil or grease on them before I put them back on. Let's do the other side now. See this it's literally all on the blind somewhere there. Just about see the screen. Yes. Now the last step is the easiest. Remove these T20 screws from the top. Keep them in a safe place. Wrong, something wrong with a zoom on here. There should be four of them. As I said, I was missing one. That one I was missing, so it's one, two, three, and four. There. Now, you can see these little lugs, positioning lugs on both sides. Clip over them, and then just move the entire bumper forward. Mind you, I'm doing all this with one arm. There you go. Next step, I need to unclip these lights before I actually drop it down so because it's cables are quite tight I'll have to do it with two hands so I'll undo the I'll get camera off oh no let's try let me yes that one's done there you go these you just Pull the little lug out, outwards towards yourself, and then just unclip it. And that should be all. Ta da! Now let's see what other damages we got here. So that's all bent. Let's see if that's coming with new one. No, that section is not coming with new bumper. I'll have to repair that Put a clip here that there All right little screw let me just check all the aircon pipes oh that aircon pipe there is 
can you see it dangerously close to that uh, that bolt I need just a gentle bending upwards let's double check here what we got here oh that serpentine belt I've seen better days okay another job to be done it doesn't look that she damaged anything else apart from just bending this bottom tray I think I can sort that out this part of the bracket here got unclipped it's a crum crumble or crumple zone bar it's intact okay cool it's only damage on the plastic so I'll have to just undo this bolt here put it all together maybe put some extra washer or something there yeah cool now as I mentioned earlier this is the process to get headlights off because headlights get one bolt up there there's another bolt here that you can't access until you take a bumper off and I think there was something underneath if I remember rightly I just can't can't see anything there now I think there was something but hey ho can't see it now it's anyway for that bolt there to remove the headlight you need uh, definitely need to take a bumper off so this is what it looks like without bumper this is that wheel arch liner as we said we have to remove first a few access for the uh, windscreen washer bottle and the little pump if you have to replace the pump that's where it is and here's the horn if you ever wondered where the horn is It's broken as well. Yeah, it looks like I'll have to uh, do some fabrication here. Right, this is the lower carrier for the bumper. Here's the point where we couldn't undo that screw. If you remember earlier, we were trying to undo and it just completely broke off there. This is the damage one side this is the damage on the other side now unfortunately I didn't see this and I didn't bought another one of them and I do wonder how to repair that I got a few ideas. I think I need to warm up this section here. Try to straighten up this piece that goes in there. I'll try to epoxy glue this section here. Hopefully it's gonna be man enough. You can always make a bracket across between this section and that section there okay and for here that part there didn't broke but everything else around it broke so I might be able to strap this somehow and some plate straps or something There you go, with a heat gun and both hands I heat warmed up this plastic and manipulated it back into the original positions so that I can use epoxy and stick it back there and stick these two sections here as well 
and then I'll add some extra brackets with some galvanized strapping. I'll just make some brackets to just secure that and do the same thing on this side. This bottom fixing hole is actually straightened up nicely. Uh, it was completely bent, just a bit of heat, gentle heat and then manipulate it with your fingers. Right, this is the lower carrier for the bumper. Here is the point where we couldn't undo that screw. If you remember earlier, we were trying to undo and it just completely broke off there. This is the damage. One side. This is the damage on the other side. Now, unfortunately, I didn't see this and I didn't bought another one of them. And I do wonder how to repair that. I got a few ideas. I think I need to warm up this section here. Try to straighten up this piece that goes in there. I'll try to epoxy glue this section here. Hopefully it's gonna be bad enough. You can always make a bracket across between this section and that section there. Okay. And for here, that part there didn't broke, but everything else around it broke, so I might be able to strap this somehow. Um, some plate straps or something. There you go, with a heat gun and both hands, I heat warmed up this plastic and manipulated it back into the original positions, so that I can use epoxy and stick it back there and stick these two sections here as well and then I'll add some extra brackets with some galvanized strapping I'll just make some brackets to just secure that and do the same thing on this side this bottom fixing hole is actually straightened up nicely uh, it was completely bent just a bit of heat, gentle heat and then manipulate it with your fingers now I'm going to fix this piece back on in order to do that I'll use some uh, epoxy adhesive weather being so cold I had to warm up everything with a heat gun Oops. and being so cold it's not going to set as it says there in five minutes and I don't want to spend all day here waiting for it to set so I'm going to put epoxy on say 90% of this joint on the rest of it I'm going to put super glue another two corners in order to achieve that initial bond and that's then there and there just a gentle heat Shouldn't have done that. Still fresh. Just gonna hold it a few minutes. Right, that is being glued. Whilst it's getting 
set. I'm going to come straight on the other side now. So we have this larger section here. You know, some will say, oh, we have to clean it all up and all that. But it's happened very recently. So I don't think there is much dirt on this joint. And I don't want to disturb the joint. I'm going to leave it in the same, same sort of... Uh, angles and right I need to manipulate it a bit more with heat to get the angle that's it I'm gonna hold it a few minutes right a few minutes later it's there it's actually holding much better it's still a bit springy there so I'm gonna put some brackets make some brackets out of this trapping and just screw it on Again, just to clarify, this is not a classic car. It's not restoring to its original glory. It's literally repairing my daughter's car so she can carry on using it. Put it back on the road. What's wrong with that? Epoxy is still pliable. You can use the rivets or little screws. So, actually, sure little screws a bit handier. Right, just grip it tight. One bracket, and do one on this side. shame that people less and less repair stuff it's always about replacing right, so this is the side that was completely broken off and I think it's much better Try just put I'll put one strap across here 
as well. Pull that bottom bit. That's the broke. That's the broken off one. So I'll do it like that. That's the job. Now, let's check this side here. This is the bit that I'm worried about the strength. I think we need to do some more on that bit there. These are the bolts going through it. Shave this up. Have to enlarge this hole. Okay, just adjust angle of this like that. I'm not talking much, it's basically just making a little bracket. It's going to go across there. I'm just going to try to line the hole up best I can. Well there. Right. Let's try.
hooked on there and that's hooked on there There you go, that's our repair, oops, that's our repair in there, holding that section of the bumper, bumper carrier, and that's a repair on that side. Comparing to what it was before, it's 110% better. Now, we have these little clips. <clears throat> this one, whoops, where is gonna go in there? You can see how it's a bit rusted. That still works. And that goes in there, and the little screw from underside fixes into it. Now, this side one has completely broke off. So what I'm going to do, I can make, I can either make, try to make it out with a strapping or I can wedge a block of wood in there, fix it from the sides so it's clumped and then I can actually screw directly into that block of wood. I know it's not first choice for automotive repairs, but I always try to think outside the box. Because outside the box is what gets me out of the trouble all the time. Because I'm not afraid of using and combining all sorts of techniques and materials. Solve the problem out. Can be metal, can be plastic, wood, anything. Now I have a good fixing point there to fix bottom of the bumper, same as I got one here. A few things, this car is 17 years old. Realistically, it's not going to be on the road more than another two or three years. So, repairs I'm doing on it are, as long as they can last more than that, and they will. They will last more than that. This kind of repair will last, like that block of wood there, can last 10 years easily. Now, the next step will be sliding that bump, bumper back on and connecting fog lights.
There you go. Bump is all there. Just make sure when you clip it on, important to get these lugs in there clipped on. And these lugs here as well. And uh, let's just double check on the side. Now we can see if you remember what I mentioned before we actually start this that the lugs fixing lugs on the new bumper or replacement bumper rather to say are broken off right there it is they broke off the old one and they broke off the new one they're the ones supposed to go on like that so What I have to do, I'll have to just make a little bracket and just link it up to that. It's just to stop bottom from flopping. This is that piece we repaired. And this is our block of wood in there, so I can actually fix that, tidy it up there. I can use a little, uh, little pieces of that strapping and just fix it on. And then this will go back on there, like that. And this will arch liner will go on there fixing there easy almost done sorry I forgot to mention it's not gonna be all done because once that is fixed I'll have to unclip the little skirt from the bottom of the uh, old bumper that's that little piece on the bottom and clip it on on the replacement one so now I'm gonna put the liners back in Oh, sorry. <laughs> Before liners, I have to put these screws back in to reconnect the bumper and the arch, real arch. Now that's a little screw. Coat it up with oil. I don't think I'll be able to film this because of being a fiddling, fiddle thing. Um, I will need both hands on it, so I do apologize for not filming this section. Now, I managed to put them both on. There you go, one is there, and one is there. We had one of them missing. I searched through my garage and found another one that will fit there, so I got both of them now on this side. It's just clipping this. liner wheel arch liner back in the place lining up the back there with a the hole putting one of these clips in so awkward to work with one hand If I put camera on the stand, you wouldn't be able to see anything. Come on, where is the hole? There is the hole. Just secure it on. You've got a little T20 screw to go back in here. Two more clips underneath. One there. One there. Should really need one, well, need a few more there, but they has been missing. Need to source some more. What's that? One on this side. That's better. 
should be a few more fixing holes there but I need to get some more some more lugs now let's do the other side rolling on the floor so you got two screws or should I say little bolts a bit of oil on them so this side is a bit Easy, I think. Right, let me turn it. Right, let's get that in. Let's get the camera in the wheel arch. Ta-da! Right, there are two holes. Can't even see them. Finger tight. Both of them. Get the one on top. Another side, I couldn't do it without using two hands on it because it was the other wrong side. Now, get it on. It wasn't on hand. I have to do it with left hand. That's a master hand. This is my right hand. It's a bit easier. It's good. to replace this screw with a non-genuine one that's what was missing easiest but can be done as it is done two more clips to go on the other side gonna buy a few more because there are a few more missing around on the side and now uh, for this one that was missing because it was ripped out and I can you see the plastic is actually um, like sort of broken torn up there it is so I'll put a little stainless steel screw and a little washer just hold it on there it's really good to put stainless steel fixings wherever you're gonna be or anyone else be removing that I did use just normal galvanized ones to repair the brackets underneath because once that goes on that really 
no one should ever ever need to remove that but the ones that are removable it's best to use stainless steel avoids getting everything rusted away like this you know if manufacturing instead of using just normal steel uses a bit of stainless there we wouldn't have that problem so in order to fix this here I really want to straighten that angle on that piece of plastic so I'm gonna warm it up and straighten it up because obviously there is some difference between these two bumpers from factory I don't know why don't really care to be honest just to get it straight or straightish Now, good thing is, for this, it's a cold weather, so as it's cooling down and cools down quickly on cold weather, it re-hardens in that shape. Now, let's try it with one hand. I've got a little bolt, put some oil on it. That will go there. Some more oil on the top bit. And then I can put a couple little screws and connect the bracket and the bumper. One. Right, wrong size. Right, that's good size now. Size 10. Ta -da. Let's do the other side. And there you go, the other side is done. That's one. This is the other. I use the standard galvanized screws here and reuse the old washer and put stainless steel screw into that little block of wood we have up there. Solid as a rock. And for the little skirt, you just simply unclips from the old one got all these clips and just clips back into the new one just walk your way around like that. it's the easiest part of the job it would be shame not not to complete it so put little slots underneath Ta-da! Now the last thing is to put a number plate on and get it off the jacks. Job done. I'll let my daughter to clean and peel off and clean all the stickers off the bumper. I'm not doing that bit. Thank you for watching. And I wish you all the best in New Year and many happy motoring days. All the best.
Deep pollution system faulty. An unstable idle. All right. Back forward. <laughs> daughter say she would never say that right let's check on this deep pollution system is it that yeah small car hard work Old cable, stiff. Yeah. What does it say? Let's do diagnose. Ignition is on. All these little Peugeots, you have to have ignition on. Right, it says that mill status is off. But it's got one DTC. Let's read the codes. PW14 camshaft position timing over advanced or system performance bank one mm. any more? No. But Engine management lights going off earlier when I started the van, uh, car. Now we see it's on now because it's on just ignition. Um, let's try to erase the code because when it started running. I went back and forth a couple of times and it, uh, engine management light has gone off. So it could be it's got some intermittent intermittent fault on it. Let's check it. Yeah, it's off. Try right, undo the AC. I think it's AC. It was clicking in and out and making idle go up and down. Yeah, it was AC. Air condition. Ah. Which is good. Which means air condition works if, it, if it's clicking in and out. If it works. Right. Regard to that code I would say it's just a well being being Persia old Persia sorry they can be a bit temperamental I'm not gonna take as anything serious I'll just see if it's going to repeat again in some future for now I'll have a good night's sleep I think it's not gonna break my my conscious or anything. Ta-da! She's got car back on. <laughs>